Hello, and welcome back to our Women in Leadership series, where we interview women in the local area and just talk to them about their rise to leadership, what made them want to be leaders, and hopefully inspire others as well to uh, consider joining a leadership position. So today I have with me V. Saba. Thank you once again for being here. Oh, it's a pleasure. I'm so happy to be here. Thank you for asking me. Oh yeah, thank you. And I've been truly inspired by your works. I love the local libraries here. They've uh, been an inspiration to me, and I feel like I need to apologize for if you ever had my nine-year-old terror <laughs> self it's running okay. around. Oh yeah, that's what libraries are for. We welcome all of that bunch. I mean, all of the energy and the fabulousness of of the youth and adults. So we were just grateful that we are able to provide service to the community. For sure, and it was a playground of the mind for me, especially when I could run around and pull out all my favorite books, the Gerald Stilton series, you know, yes, all of yes. it. For sure. So to start off our interview, tell me what you do in your current role and how long you've been doing it. Well, you know, public libraries are a significant importance in the community, and our vision to um, engage, to um, enlighten, to empower, and to inform lifelong citizens in the Brazos uh, Valley is huge. Uh, and we do that with a whole bunch of things. So mm -hmm. I have fabulous team of um, people who help me, and we work together as a team to provide services in the community. And we, we do that through our collections. Uh, we do that through our programming. We um, do that through our customer service. Uh, we're always engaged in trying to, to find out what the needs of the community is. And through that, we're able to provide the services that the community needs. So there are lots and lots of things that you can think of or not think of that we provide. And just I just ask that you visit us and, and just see all of the services that we provide. And we're, it's all free. It's all free of charge. Oh, yeah, and I love that. You mentioned those programs. So what kind of programs do you have? Uh, we have programs for all ages. Um, and, of course, the the most important thing, which, you know, we love kids, um, mm -hmm. and early literacy is the key to uh, lifelong success. And we truly believe that um, starting kids off and teaching them the importance of reading is, is very important. And so coming into the, the libraries to participate with the young families or old families or young at heart families mm -hmm. to participate in our story time programs that we have in both of our library locations is huge. So just engaging them in stories and sharing the love of reading um, is very, very important. We also have tons of programs for kids, um, for teens and for adults, uh, book clubs galore. We have, um, we work with our partners in the community to come into our libraries to, to engage and to teach our community with some of the resources and, and services that they also provide in the community. I always love that term, the young at heart, because I always hope to embody it, yes. even as I get to my 60s, 70s, if you know God lets me. Exactly. We have a fabulous uh, program that we're working with um, the Bird Institute of Technology on uh, 3D printing. And wow. so when I say young and hard, we take folks from six years old to 106. <laughs> so anyone who's interested in learning about 3D printing and how that works is welcome to our libraries to take those classes. And we even have 3D printers in our libraries that people can use as long as you go through the training mm -hmm. and you can use it for free. That's me. I'd be one of the ones interested yes, in 3D printing. Exactly. I've seen people print little 3D dinosaur heads you can put on a it's wall. It's fabulous. I, yeah. We have our printers going continuously mm -hmm. all day long. So it's a very, very uh, popular program. I love to hear that. Thank you. So what made you want to be in this role? Well, my heart is all about service. Mm -hmm. And I love serving my community. I love when people feel good. I love providing information and access to people. Um, and I really didn't know that I wanted to be a librarian when I grew up until I began working for a nonprofit organization back in the day um, <laughs> who was affiliated with a public library. And there, at that time, did I realize, oh my gosh, it was an eye-opening experience how significant public libraries are in the community and how they provide services for everyone. Mm -hmm. um, and and whatever the need is, we're able to, to provide. So those types of, of things and that um, 
um, realization made me aware that, oh, I want to be a librarian when I grow up. And that got me the motivation to continue on to school because to be a librarian, of course, you have to have your master's in library science. Right. And so I moved on and continued to, to pursue that um, degree. And so then it's like, hey, I have the piece of paper. Mm -hmm. Let's go. I'm ready. Oh, the piece of paper that says I can do it I for can sure. do it for sure, exactly. <laughs> and are you from the Brazos Valley area? I am not. Originally, gotcha. you can hear a tint of accent. Originally, <laughs> I'm a Ghanaian. I was born in Ghana, West Africa. Gotcha. But I grew up in New York City, and um, I did my undergrad and grad school in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Gotcha. In New York, you must have grown up around all of these major libraries I and everything. I did. The New York Public Library, uh, Brooklyn Central Library, uh, Queens Public Library is is so. Libraries were part of my also growing up. Mm -hmm. um, it's a place, safe haven, where you can go to and and you know after school pick up a book, or roam through the the collection, browse around, pick up a magazine, attend a program. So it was part of my uh, growing up. So I think it's a whole thing that I'm here now also providing services to the community and that's just like my lifelong dream. I understand. I would say that growing up around stories is what made me become a journalist in the first place yes. because I'm in some way also telling other people's yes, stories. Exactly. I really appreciate libraries for kind of giving me that inspiration mm -hmm. and that kick for sure. Thank you. Uh, so what motivates you to keep going and who was someone that encouraged you along the way? I, growing up in Ghana, my pre-adolescent years, my grandmother um, raised me and seeing her work ethic, she was an uh, entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. So as a woman, you know, just being able to to make a living on our own and and show me the path of her independence and how uh, regardless of your circumstances and your situation, you you know, she was able to 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 do this and be uh, able to um, raise raise her children, her grandkids, and and just just have the the motivation to to keep going. And I think her work ethic and her her um, her just teaching us that it is important to to. Um, to be motivated in something. Mm -hmm. And you know, her motivation was her family, and her motiv motivation was uh, to make sure that she's, she's putting food on the table for her kids. And so whatever that motivation is for you, um, you need to you know, take that and, and run with it. And I think her being there and teaching and, and learning from her and gave me the work ethics that I have, also my dad, um, has great work ethics, and I think um, both of those really gave me, you know, even during my undergrad years when I was in, in college, I had three jobs. I was always working because I knew where I wanted to be, and so um, in order to get there, I, you know, with didn't have enough money for financial aid, so I had to work to pay for my uh, college tuition, and so that was the motivation that I, I needed to to do so. Mm -hmm. I understand. Thank mm -hmm. you. And really just to keep going at it and exactly. get that piece of paper, exactly. like we said, yes. says you can. It is. Uh, so where in your journey have you felt support as a woman in a leadership role? I know you mentioned your family is very important. They are. Also, when I began the beginning of my career, before I even knew I wanted to be a librarian, <laughs> there were two women who um, really motivated me and gave me the, um, the push uh, to move forward. And those two ladies started an organization called Beginning with Books. And that's where I was introduced to public, public libraries on a different level, on the backside of, of public service. Mm -hmm. So they, they uh, created this organization that mission was to instill meaningfully and the numbers of children who become enthusiastic and lifelong readers. Mm -hmm. So through different programming and services that we work with the public library on, um, they were educating families, parents, uh, caregivers, 
uh, volunteers to provide literacy and, and, and to, to engage kids through literacy um, and get them really interested in, in from an early age and mm -hmm. just, just to create that connection that books are part of the journey of life and that you know wherever you want to go that that's that's where you will start and it will take you to to bigger and, and larger places so that in itself they really gave me um and that's when i also decided during that my time working in that organization that i realized that i wanted to go through my uh the master's program and get my library uh, science degree and they truly motivated me and and gave me um, all of the, the different tools and resources that I needed to move forward with it. So I'm truly grateful uh, for them for, for doing that. I love that. I think stories do give an amazing sense of escapism yes. and things, you yes. know, transporting you away to these different places and these different viewpoints. Exactly. So Elizabeth Siegel and Joan Breast Freeberg, um, you know, they're, they were the two women who led the way to my where I am now. I love that. Thank you. Continuing on, has there ever been a time you didn't feel that support or you found it difficult to be in your role as a woman in your field? My field is majority women. <laughs> That's um, fair, yeah. Because of the fact that, you know, when it comes to um, the field that I'm in, um, you know, men are actually the minority. Um, so, but in terms of difficulty, um, it took it took me a while because it's not you don't go into your career field and automatically be up on a level where you ultimately want to be. It, it takes time. It takes mm -hmm. uh, time in your career to because you have to learn the ropes, right? You have mm -hmm. to learn how the services work, um, and you have to put in time, as as they say. And that's how I was able to do it because I've worked in several different library systems, uh, several different um, positions, and all of those have, I wouldn't say difficult, I'll say challenged. They've challenged me to, to, um, to look at each situation in a different, different way. And depending on the level that you're at, it, it allows you to look at different, posi different positions or different situations differently as well. Mm -hmm. And all of these, um, they've sort of elevated me to where I am t uh, today. I've had support uh, through my career. And like I said, it's, it hasn't been easy, but I've been able to work through all of those challenges and, and mm -hmm. be able to get to where I am today. And especially in those women-dominated fields, it's exactly. so essential to support each other as women. It is. It's so important. And the support is there, and I will say that um, one of the things when I moved here to um, the community is, in my field, you know, we have what we Texas Library Association. Mm -hmm. So it's an association that is truly an amazing organization that supports the services that we do. So regardless of whether you are in a school library, in a public library, academic library, special library, regardless of where you are. It's an association that provides the tools, the training, and the resources that is there for its library and li the library's staff. So I'm very, very grateful for them. And it's great to be part of that uh, association because I think it just elevates all of the, um, the, the nuances of you know, our day-to-day -day challenges that we have to mm -hmm. face uh, through our profession. For sure. Thank you. Uh, so what would you want any woman to know about being in a leadership role, especially if they had any hesitations or worries that they wouldn't be respected in their role or their position? I think it's a key element um, that we as women, um, I mean, I'm a mom, mm -hmm. and um, you mentioned too, um, that it, it's really important that, and as a mom, leadership, I, I'm a, a nurturer. Mm -hmm. So leadership to me is that, it's important to nurture others along the way because I, I was nurtured to be where I am and I truly believe that it's important to to give back um, to the community regardless of what that looks like. And also, all of us are in, in positions of 
you may think that you're not in a leadership pos position, but you truly are because there's someone else that's looking up to you um, and thinking that you know they want to be just like you when they grow up. Mm -hmm. So regardless of our level of position that we're in, I think we're all leaders, and it's important for us to recognize that. And so it, it, it allows us to be humble, but at the same time give make us more of um, of, of, of look look at the bigger picture and, and think of someone else is looking at me. You know what can I do to make sure that what I'm doing is is at the at most important, or that someone else can take from from what what I'm doing so that they can learn from it and mm -hmm. be able to you know motivate them to go wherever they want to go in their career. So it's important mm -hmm. that you know we we look at ourselves. Yeah, I think that. every life touches another in some way, and you know we yeah. can always bring each other up, exactly. And, especially as leaders. Yes, love that. Thank you. So you mentioned, did you have any female leaders you look up to or currently look up to? I do. I um, Michelle Obama is my all-time favorite. Um, you know, I've read her books. I have. Um, I mean, I just want to emulate her. <laughs> I mean, she's <laughs> just a fabulous person. And I think mm -hmm. she's so positive, regardless of what circumstances maybe uh, she may be going through and I, we've lived we've seen her live you know through um, many many tough situations she's um, basically stepped up and and made sure that um, she's she's bringing positivity mm -hmm. into into the whatever the situation is so I truly look up to her and I think her wit her wisdom her um, knowledge is you know what I strive to learn and and mm -hmm. do so yes definitely Michelle Obama for sure I think she's gone through situations that no one else will ever encounter exactly. and has such amazing insights she's done on it them. with so much grace and um, it, it, it seemed effortless to us but right. I'm sure there's behind the scene there's a whole lot more but I just want to you know if I could be a little bit even like her <laughs> I'm, I'll be great Absolutely, yes. just embody just a little bit of exactly. her grace, wisdom, yes. insight. I love it. Thank you. In that case, for my final question, what advice would you give your younger self, knowing that you would one day be in a leadership position? That's a tough question. <laughs> um, advice for my younger self: Be true to yourself. I think that's very important to be true to yourself, mm -hmm. um, because we never know where we're going to end up in in our careers, right? Mm -hmm. Uh, we may think, because when I was in my um, undergrad, I didn't realize that you know this is what I was going to do when I grew up. I, librarianship wasn't even in my radar when I was in college, and so it's just just be true to yourself, follow your heart, and know what you like, what you don't like, and and just live a wholesome life and um, love and and. Be a good human, mm -hmm. and um, and I think I've been able to emulate all of those. But in terms of speaking to my younger self, it's just be true to yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you once again for being on here to, with me today. It's been wonderful to talk to oh, you. Well, thank and be you able to so much for having me. It's a, it's a pleasure. Thank you very much. And in that case, stay tuned for next episode of Women in Leadership.